Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast AP Podcast 2.2, where we will learn what isotopic notation is, average atomic mass, parts of periodic table, properties of neutrons, protons, and electrons, and electron jumping with the Bohr equation. So let's hop to it. What does this mean? This guy right here is the mass of one particular sulfur. That would be like if I said, um, this is how much Mitch weighs. That's not the average mass of a boy. It's just the mass of Mitch. This is the protons. Protons are also called the atomic, I suppose I should stop this. Protons are also called the atomic number. And they help you identify. So if something has 16 protons, it has to be sulfur. So that's how you could tell, oh, that's a Mitch, because it has 16 protons. Proton determines identity and charge of the nucleus. Not the whole atom, just of the nucleus. Neutron determines mass and nuclear stability. Will it be radioactive or not? And really, nuclear stability is not in the AP curriculum, so mass is all that really matters to us. Electrons determine charge and reactivity. And that charge thing is assuming that you want to keep the same identity. So you can never change protons. Never! Change protons. Um, and electrons really only changes for us. Where does the mass from the periodic table come from? So we look at the periodic table. It'll say carbon, and it will say 12.01. Now, where does that come from? Scientists chose, which is odd, carbon, which we knew had six times the mass of hydrogen, to have a mass of 12.00, because carbon's in every living thing, and living things are way more important than the non-living things. This gave us the mass of the neutrons and the protons. Neutrons and protons are close, but not identical, but when they did this, they didn't know that. So we're stuck with, like, bad history. We average every atom of each isotope to get the average atomic mass. Now, really, we take samples, but still. To make life easy, we say a proton and neutron weigh 1 AMU. It's a made-up and accepted unit, like a fathom. And if you know how long a fathom is and why a fathom is a fathom, you'll know that it's not quite unfathomable. There are three isotopes of H, H1, H2, H3. But the average mass of H is not 2. The average mass of H is 1.001. Huh. Now, how could that be? Well, see, hydrogen, 1, is 99% of all the hydrogen. And this is like um, 0.05%. This is 0.95 of a percent. So really, there aren't anything but hydrogen 1s. So the average mass is weighted to show that. So these are really hard to find. They're very, very, very rare. They're like a four-leaf clover. If you ever found a four-leaf clover, you're lying. There are no four-leaf clovers. Concept questions. How many carbon atoms weigh 12.01? None! It's the average. If the average AP chemistry grade in the nation is a 65.217341 of a percent, then does that mean that's your grade? My goodness, I hope not, because that is weighted, because there's a lot more people taking this in Alabama than there are at Lyons Township High School. How likely is it if I grab one boron atom? It will weigh 10.8. Hi! Um, 0%, because none of them weigh 10.8. The isotopes have individual masses. Average atomic mass. Naturally occurring europium consists of two isotopes with a mass of 151 and 153. That means these are the only... Europii <laughs> that exist. So the way you can find these masses is if 151 has an abundance of that, you take your percentage. Notice I use the decimal form. I hope you know in math you never use the des the percent form. Use decimal form. So 48 percent would be the 151. So we weight it by multiplying that. Then I have 51.97 percent, 0.5197 percent, and multiply that times 153. And when I do that, so notice how this number is multiplied by a bigger number than this sad number. That means that the answer will be closer to 153 than 151. So I know my answer is going to be 152 point something. So 0 0.4803 times 151 plus quantity, whoops, uh, 0.5197 
times 153 and quantity, and I get 152.03. Now, it's not very different, and this would be AMU, really 152.04. Um, um, this isn't very different, but notice it's only a little bit more 153, so that would make sense. E equals mc squared. We lose some mass to binding energy. So 10 protons, the mass of 10 protons plus the mass of 10 neutrons is not equal to 10 protons plus 10 neutrons. It's not equal to, oh, what is number 10? Oh, neon 20. Neon 20 is lighter because some mass turns into binding energy. And what binding energy does is it holds the nucleus together. Because we realize we, are ha we have a bunch of protons near each other and they all repel each other. What holds them together? Binding energy. And that formula is E equals mc. I suppose I should make this better. Squared. Okay. So if I'm doing this, this actually isn't that bad because I have my mass times my abundance, my mass times my abundance, abundance and mass. So I have three of them instead of two of them, but that's pretty easy. And notice magnesium 24 doesn't weigh 24, it weighs annoying mass, annoying mass, and annoying mass because we have better and better instruments to do that. So you can expect any of those. 0.7870 times 23.985 plus 0.1013, make sure you can see that point, times 24.96, plus 0.1117, times 25.983, equals add all that up and you get 24.30 AMU. Now don't forget your units, okay? Periodic table. Now for the periodic table, oh, I should have done this, a row is a period. So remember your periodic table looks like something like this. Whee! And rows go across. A row is called a period. A column is called a group or a family. Right? Family means they have similar properties. Right? In Hawaiian that's ohana. Ohana means family which means no one gets left behind or forgotten. And you all have the same properties. See? Two eyes, two eyes. Teeth, teeth. Mm, okay, I'm running out here. Groups. Alkali metals, so group 1A. So what's going to happen here is, again, we've got a periodic table. Woo! <laughs> 1A is right here. 1A. And that is the alkali metals. You know that's their name. 2A is the alkaline earth metals. Hey, this is 2A. 17A are the halogens. Or 17 or 7A. Um, 17 are the halogens. Halogens. And then the last ones are the noble gases. Noble. Halo. And the other ones are named by the top element on the column. So boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Get that? Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, halogen. Important regions periodic table. Non-metals, metalloids. Oh, non-metals, metalloids, and metals. Metalloids are also called semi-metals or semi-metals. They mean exactly the same thing. Transition series. <clears throat> so when I have my periodic table, and yes, you should be able to draw a periodic table this quickly. Transition series is these guys right here. And then you have the inner transitions, which I don't even draw when I draw my quick periodic table right here. This is my inner trans. So the tricky parts here, maybe we can make this a highlighter. That's not much of a highlighter. These are my nonmetals. <laughs> then I have, ooh, I can change my color. Mm, hard for the colorblind guy. Then I have my semi-metals. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, 
There are my semi-metals, and if you notice, it makes a... There's a stair step on there. Carbon's a non-metal. Metal. Pretend that's yellow. I'm sorry, I messed that up. Everything else is a metal. So you need to be able to identify those. Properties of metals. You should know this. Think of an aluminum can. They conduct heat and electricity. So that's why you have a koozie to keep your drink cold. If you don't know what a koozie is, you really need to get out more. A koozie is a sponge thing you put around your can of Diet Coke, which I drink entirely too much of. Um, they are malleable. What malleable means, if I hit it with a hammer, yes, I have hit cans of coke with a hammer before all of my hammers have claws it bends it means it's bendable it doesn't shatter the opposite of malleable is brittle so if you think of aunt edna's hip aunt edna's on the stairs and she falls down ah! aunt edna's hip is brittle it shatters into a bunch of pieces and she never gets out of the bed again and then poor aunt edna right now that happens because they lost Calcium. They didn't drink enough milk. You don't see Aunt Edna drinking milk. You see Aunt Edna drinking, I don't know, prune juice or something. So they lost calcium because they didn't have enough milk. And milk is a metal which would make your bones more malleable and you wouldn't have this problem. Poor Aunt Edna. So you put her on an IV of some cow juice. They have to conduct heat and electricity. They're malleable. They're ductile, which means you can turn them into wires. And they are also lustrous which means shiny, for those of you with poor vocabularies. I almost wrote poor vocabularies. And you should be able to spell shiny different from shinny. I don't think there's an E in shiny, though. So, properties of non-metals are literally the opposite of metal. So, you can recopy that same thing. Not, 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 not. Like, this guy is the opposite of Metallica. Except Sandman part. Oops. Properties of metalloids. Metalloids, they have properties of both. It's not a blend of each, but they have properties of both. Now, it's true you can't be a conductor and a non-conductor, but for example, you could be a good conductor and you could be brittle. So it will have um, all of one property, another of another. Bohr calculations. Find the energy of a photon with a length of 800. You get this. Yay! This is your... Um, equation sheet that you get for every test and quiz that you get. Yay! I love it, I love it, I love it. You can look it up on the internet if you want to. Um, e equals H nu, C equals lambda nu. I don't know what these letters mean. Hey, I'm good at decoding. This cheats for me everywhere. H, it's just a number, like pi is a number. So find the energy, energies, E, find the energy of a photon with a wavelength of 800 nanometers. Wavelength. Oh, that's that guy. Ooh, uh-oh. So now what I'm going to have to do, C is the speed of light. I'm going to have to solve for V, which is really nu, first. So I have to solve for frequency. So C equals lambda nu. Okay? C is 2.998 E8 meters per second. Equals lambda, what I'm looking for. Oh, no. Lambda, which is 800. Now, if you notice, this is meters per second. I need to change this to meters. To make something a nanometer, it would be 800, if you remember our metric conversions, e to the negative 9. Nano means e to the negative 9 times nu. Nu, nu, nu. So ask your calculator, 2.99 e8 divided by 800 e negative 9, and you get 3.74 E14, and then that would be, that is your frequency, so that is 1 over seconds. That's not what I want, though. I want energy. Energy. E equals H nu. Well, E equals H. H is a constant, which is just basically the slope of a line when you graph a couple of characteristics. 6.626 E negative 36, 34, sorry. Oh, come on. 34 times new. 3.74 E14. So if you notice E, whoops, I made that a negative. That's a negative 34 times E to the 14th. My answer is going to be small. There's not going to be much energy in a photon. 
Oh, that kind of makes sense. Or else it would really hurt, and they don't hurt that bad. 6.626, at least the visible light photon in 800 nanometers is invisible light. E, negative 34 times 3.74. My E, oh no, my decimal point is stuck. 3.74 E, what was it again? 14. Bam, and I get 2.48 E negative 19 joules. Notice this was joule seconds. So, and this was 1 over seconds. That cancels out my seconds. I'm left with the Julie, Julie, Julies, which are very, 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 very small. Oop, sorry, Julie. How much energy does a photon release as it follows from the 6th to the 2nd energy level? This would have to be given to you. As would what N is. So what happens is we have the shell model of the atom. Nucleus. And if it falls from 6 down to 2... What you have to do is calculate the energy at each level. Now, this equation was dropped, but I just want you to know this right now. How much energy is photon released? You don't have to actually do this calculation anymore, but you should know that as it falls, remember we do Coulomb's Law? Q1, Q2 over radius squared. So the radius is changing, right? So that distance is changing. As it gets closer, nucleus is way positive. This is negative. The bond is stronger, right? But it's going to absorb or release energy. Well, as it gets smaller, it's going to release energy. Now, it says that, but I want to focus on it releasing. So the actual calculation of this is not necessary for the AP exam, but you do need to know as it gets closer, it will release energy because it's forming a stronger bond. And that's cool. Review. Hey, hey, hey. Know your parts of the periodic table. Know what protons, neutrons, and electrons contribute. Notice your isotopes compared to others. And know those equations that I told you to know, not the one you didn't. Know the Bohr ing <laughs> equations. Now, I did not explain a whole lot of what wavelength and frequency are. You've taken physics classes, they do that. And if you want to look it up, you can find it in 30 seconds. But. Maybe you remember it, but really it's all about energy and chemistry. So we'll say that, and thank you, Coulomb, and toodles.